Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Deadpool. This is an action adventure, a spectacle fighter. I suppose it's probably the best way to describe it. In the vein of stuff like Ninja Gaiden, God of War, and so on and so forth. Starring Deadpool, who is a Marvel character who has a tendency to break the fourth wall a lot. Which is really what this entire game is based around. It's crude, it's rude, it's chauvinistic, it's ultra-violent, and that's probably exactly what you'd expect from Deadpool. Question is, is it any good? Alright, first things first. Let's have a look at the actual options menu. Limited. Display, no real options there. Brightness and safe frame. Under graphics, you have four presets. Very similar to Call of Duty, although even worse, you can see the low, medium, high, and extra. That was something that the past couple of Call of Duty games have included. So I cracked it all the way up to max. I mean, it runs as well as you would expect. It's not exactly a fantastic looking game, so... Caps out at about 60 frames per second. Funnily enough, the cutscenes go to 120, which is very strange. But if you've got a 120Hz monitor, you will not notice the additional smoothness you would expect from that. Which kind of sucks. I have tried it with VSync on or off before you even ask about that. Same result on both. I mean, hard capped at 60 is not that terrible. For the vast majority of people, it makes no difference at all because they don't have a monitor that can support 120 hertz. But even then, nice to have the option. Audio, you've got your separate sliders as well as your dialogue options and subtitles on or off. Half the time, it's going to give you subtitles anyway, which will be kind of explained once you see the game. You'll get, you'll get the idea. Controls can be rebound, which is always nice. Keyboard, mouse, or controller are available. I would suggest... Actually, I wouldn't really suggest either of them. They're both fine. I've been using keyboard and mouse this entire time. It's obviously designed with a controller. It's obviously designed as a console game, but it actually works completely fine with keyboard and mouse in my experience up to this point. Controls being fully rebindable is always nice. If there is any mouse acceleration, I haven't noticed it, but in a third-person game, it can be difficult to do so. It's much more noticeable in first-person shooters. And this one is primarily focused on melee, although it does have some gunplay in it anyway. Now, I was talking about the idea that Deadpool is crude, rude, chauvinistic, and ultra-violent. It's also very self-referential, because Deadpool is a character that breaks the fourth wall pretty much constantly, which actually makes this game somewhat unique. Now, I'm going to go into the game and show you why, but before I do, I'd like to show you some character bios, because I think this is going to give you a little bit of a feel as to what the ideas behind this game actually are, what kind of theme you've, you're going to be seeing here. So, if we were to look at, say, the cable bio, I think this might give you an idea. So let's take a look. Who the fuck is that? He's a man out of time. Who the fuck is that? He likes to fight crime. Who the fuck is that? He ain't got the fool. Who the fuck is that? But he ain't a fool. He's fucking cable. Yeah, something along those lines. Or alternatively, of course, we could have a look at this one. Psylocke and I used to hang out in Wolverine's little secret club, the Uncanny X-Force. She's nothing special, just your typical British-turned-Japanese psychic ninja who is wicked hot! <laughs> and I'm pretty sure she's into me. Apologies for a little break. Unfortunately, going into those bios actually jacks the sound right back up, so that's a little bit of a weird one. One way or the other, it doesn't take itself seriously at all. So let's get into it and show you what's going on with it. There are two modes, the campaign and challenges. There is no multiplayer in this game of any description, unfortunately. So the replayability is limited to say the least. Once you've beaten the campaign, you really only have the challenges available, which of course kind of score attacks, leaderboards, and that is about it. So let's get into it. Okay, so... This game is something of an action adventure, a little bit of a spectacle fighter, focused mostly on stylistic combat, a little bit of platforming is involved here and there, but it is otherwise a fairly linear story. There's a little bit of room for exploration in these levels, there's quite a lot of hidden stuff around the place. Usually pick up either ammo or these little emblems which give Deadpool points. Now, an upgrade system is in the game, looks something like this. There are, it would appear, at least four different ranged weapons and three melee weapons, as well as a couple of different gadgets, including bear traps, landmines, and so on and so forth. So you will want to upgrade your weapons as you go through the game. Those appear to be polo mallets, which is a little bit strange, but hey, we'll, we'll, we'll go with it. Now, if I recall correctly, I think there might be some player upgrades that I can grab here. 
Let's see what we've got. Some drain speed. Multi-evade would be nice, but it's not like I'm going to be having that anytime soon. Reward costs vary pretty wildly. Some of them are extremely cheap. Some are very clearly not. I think, yeah, let's, let's grab frequency of momentum. Sounds like a good idea. And for the most part, when you get a weapon, you can't actually upgrade it immediately. It will unlock the upgrades at an arbitrary time in the game, so you can't fully upgrade all of your items until later on. I assume that is to stop you sticking with one weapon. Now, guns-wise, they managed to do a pretty good job of making you use multiple guns because you just flat out do not have enough ammo for them. Otherwise, it's extremely easy to run out of ammunition. Melee weapons, well, it really comes down to the situation. I've got the kind of iconic double swords there, and then you actually have a pair of Psy as well that you can use, which are a little bit quicker, and then there's those kind of polo mallet things. Each of them has different sets of unlockable combos. Admittedly, most of the game does consist of bashing both Q and E, your light and heavy attacks in different orders, but once you get an unlock, you can also mix in a little bit of gun carter, so you can mix your guns into the melee combat, which is actually quite enjoyable. You will no doubt be seeing some of that momentarily. At least when I, I find my way around here. There we go. I guess we're going in here. Yo, Summers! Thought you said this was the way to go! Door's locked! What the hell, Summers? I learned it by watching you, alright? <laughs> when I say that Deadpool is quite a character, I'm really not kidding. He's... What's the best way to describe Deadpool? He's a psychotic, sociopathic, ninja mercenary assassin. A little schizophrenic with two different voices in his head, and he is a chauvinistic piece of filth. And he revels in it. The entire game, in fact, revels in that very idea. So, no doubt, people are going to start to get pretty damn upset at this game. I could see it over the next couple of days. Some people are going to see some of these scenes that are uh, viewed as very much sexist, chauvinistic, and so on and so forth. And they're completely and totally right. That's exactly what they are. Without question. There was a bit early on in the game whereby a female character ends up getting impaled on a spike and he comments on the size of her breasts. She is obviously dead at the time. This is going to upset a lot of people. I don't think there's any real question about that. And there's plenty of toilet humor. There's plenty of just generally immature stuff as well as some fairly funny grabs and the occasional lol lol lo, so random kind of purple monkey dishwasher sort of humor. Funnily enough, I would say that the random humor is actually quite well balanced. Now, if you were to look at the trailer, you would think, yeah, the entire game is just random wackiness and zany nonsense, and this is going to get extremely boring extremely quickly. Not actually the case. It doesn't do that much of it, which I'm pretty happy with. If it had kept doing that, it would have got very, very dull indeed. So, thankfully, it doesn't. It... It spaces it out quite nicely. There's a, also a bunch of meta humor involved in it as well, because Deadpool is a character that likes to break the fourth wall. So you're going to find an awful lot of humor that references different gamey elements. Now, I would like to put forward a theory. As you're well aware, of course, art has various interpretations, and the creator can't really control that interpretation unt after the actual thing ends up getting released and put out to the public. People are going to have different ideas. So I suppose the question then becomes, is this game a self-aware parody along the lines of Spec Ops The Line? Now, Spec Ops The Line had this whole notion that it was sort of parodying the different tropes of current modern military shooters, yeah? The, the ultra-violence involved in them and the overall morally questionable nature of what's going on, yeah? That's what they claimed anyway. Some people didn't get it. And honestly, if that's what you're shooting for and a lot of people don't get it, then it may very well be that you just didn't deliver the message very well. They claim to have deliberately used very generic third-person cover-based shooter mechanics in order to poke 
not so much, it's not so much poking fun. I think that's probably the wrong word to use. But it, it is very much a situation where they claim, yeah, th this stuff is deliberately generic for a reason. Because we're supposed to be kind of mocking the subject matter. And it's also supposed to be something of a social commentary. That we, we revel in this stuff a little bit too much. Is Deadpool that, but for ultra bloody, chauvinistic, nonsensical action games? Potentially. Now, the way I s the, the reason that I say that is because Deadpool, I think, as a character, is a perfect vehicle for that kind of commentary because he very much breaks the fourth wall a lot, and he is able to comment on the ridiculous gamey nature of a lot of what's going on. There's actually plenty of examples of that going on in the game. Early on, he talks about the progression system, and the voice he said says, impossible, we're already as awesome as we can possibly be. That doesn't make any sense. And then he basically remarks, well, you pretty much gotta have it because it's a video game. And that's an interesting little poking at the idea that actually progression-based systems for a, a character like Deadpool that already has a fully developed set of skills make very little sense. And yeah, actually, you're kind of right. They don't make a lot of sense, but they're in the game because people want them in the game and they expect them from this genre. There's plenty of other examples as well where he'll just like flat out tell you where to go or mock the fact that a particular element of the game is contrived saying, oh yeah, okay, right, well, let me think. Do I throw these two switches that are in conveniently placed areas? Blah, 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 and doing things like that. Also commentates on this idea that, oh, they, the designers would have never put it there if you weren't supposed to do something with it, and things like that. There's even some nice little jabs at poor texture quality, which this game most assuredly does have. And my controls are going ballistic for some reason. Why? What on earth is happening? This is really, really weird. So my controls are forcing me in a particular direction. There we go. They seem to have loosened up now. That was weird. Never seen that before. Anyway, as I was saying, they poke fun at the poor texture quality and the fact that a lot of the props are just props. He just, like, flat out lifts up the book the bookcase. He says, oh, yeah, yeah, let's have a look at what's on the shelf. He just lifts the shelf up because it's just a prop. It doesn't actually have any books on it at all. So it's that kind of thing. Is that... One, funny, and two, actually a commentary, I have to wonder. Now, that's that's the real mystery, isn't it? Is it actually a commentary, or is it just flat-out BS? It's difficult to say, frankly. I'm going to lift this up here and assume maybe that I can actually climb it all the way up there. It's, it's difficult to say whether or not they're trying to do that. And more to the point, think about the stuff like the actual chauvinism within the game, the, the fairly obvious leering and exploitation that's going on. Arguably, could you say that that too was a commentary on that kind of thing in video games? Maybe. Or maybe not. You know? I think th there is the possibility that I am giving the game far more credit than it deserves. I think I maybe have to align this so I can jump on there. There is the possibility that that's the case. Maybe I'm giving the game more credit than it actually deserves. Maybe I'm giving the writer... God, the bloody controls have gone crazy again. Maybe I'm giving the writer more credit than he deserves. That's a possibility. I would like to think, though, that that's exactly what they were attempting to do. They are self-referential. They've created a game that kind of mocks itself. And the reason that there are those kind of those psychopathic moments, aside from the, being the character of Deadpool, and those chauvinistic moments that make you a little bit uncomfortable, the ridiculous teenage ogling, the slightly more disturbing commentary of the breasts of a dead woman, is that put there on purpose to mock it and say, this is not cool, yeah? This is not... The only reason we're getting away with this is because Deadpool is actually kind of a, a slimy anti-hero that really is not considered to be anyone worth imitating, yeah? He's not someone that you should think is amazing in every way. He's He's got his own little awesome tropes surrounding him, but is he an amazing character that you should want to be like? No. No, you shouldn't want to be like Deadpool. He's a slob. He's a psychopath. That's the point. You can even go further than that and kind of use it as an excuse for the gameplay. Some people have said that, yeah, this has got pretty average spectacle fighter gameplay. So let's get into the mechanics before I revisit my little theory here, because I've been rabbiting on about it for quite some time. So, okay, where did he go? There he is. All right, 
So, the mechanics are pretty basic spectacle fighting. So you've got light attacks, heavy attacks, you've got ranged attacks. You can mix up different weapons, like say you can switch between your melee weapons, pretty much kind of in the middle of a combo, it's not too difficult to do. And you can also switch between your guns, which is generally a pretty good idea, considering that your guns have a tendency of running out of ammunition pretty quickly. The ranged combat is pretty standard. It's actually quite similar to another High Moon game by the name of Transformers Fall of Cybertron, which was one of my favorite games of last year, in the sense that there is no cover system per se, but you do have the ability to change the side of, from which you're firing. So you can use cover to cover parts of your body, but you can't like sit in cover. The game's clearly not designed around that. It's more of a case of the game very much being designed around plenty of crazy melee combat. Will you stop that? That is not acceptable. All right. You do also have the ability to teleport, which is particularly useful. And I'm going to use it there. And it also doubles as a counter-attack, kind of Arkham Asylum style. If you press B at the right time, you're able to do a counter-attack. There are also gun counter-attacks that can be used while you're juggling enemies. So there's a reasonable amount of combat variety. Admittedly, most of the combos usually involve mashing either... Q or E, and then mixing the gun carter into it from time to time, then using your momentum moves once you've built up enough momentum to do so. You can then get those different passive abilities like critical on every few hits and so on and so forth. Again, very Arkham Asylum, Arkham City gameplay style. Is it well put together? Yes. Is it put together as good as a game like Arkham? No, it isn't. Was it designed to be? Not necessarily. I've got to say that Arkham has this whole free-flowing combat thing going on for it. Less of that within Deadpool, mostly because you're able to do an awful lot more ranged attacks. You don't have to necessarily engage thugs in melee. You can just pick them off. In fact, a lot of the bosses, you expect to have to do an awful lot of dodging and weaving. You just pull your guns out and just blow them away, and it's surprisingly effective. The combat system is definitely not perfect. It's a little bit slow at the start, and it doesn't have a lot of nuance to it until you start to unlock the abilities that let you mix Gun Carter into the mix. And wow, mix into the mix. I'm repeating a lot of words today. That's quite crazy. To actually get Gun Carter into the mix and so on and so forth. And that's good. Uh, that actually does provide a reasonable amount of combat variety. I'm not necessarily so happy about the number of weapons that are available. It's funny, that actually looked like a, a dead-off drop, so I didn't go for it, but hey, there you go. Alright. Let's gun him down, eventually. Looks like he's going to be able to take a lot of hits. Maybe not. Not such a good idea. It's nicely kinetic. It's satisfying for the most part, and it does have some skill involved in it. There are plenty of situations that you get into where you just can get very easily gunned down. You are not bulletproof by any stretch of the imagination. And if you get caught in a crossfire, you can die extremely fast, which I do very much approve of. You can't just go wading through enemies. You've got to be a little bit smarter about it. And that's cool. And I've got to say there's a lot of impact to the attacks as well. I expected combat to be quite floaty with Deadpool because like, oh, hey, super agile. But in fact, his default swords aren't, don't actually attack that fast and as a direct result there's a lot of meaty punch behind them and then you, if you want to use the fast weapons then you can just grab the psi slower weapons you can grab the hammers and so on and so forth so it's good like it actually feels pretty damn good i would describe it as above average i don't think that it does anything exceptionally well but it's definitely not par the course either it starts off that way but it gets a lot better the longer you go on, the more stuff you unlock for it, and the combat does gain a lot more nuance and a lot more moves that you can pull off, and just generally gets more awesome. It feels good. It really, really does. It actually feels really, really good, and the game doesn't screw you over with any cheap stuff either. There's no crazy stun locking going on. Because of the teleport ability, you can basically get out of any awkward situation, although teleport is fairly limited, so good to know that you can't just bash that time and again. It's good. Like, it's it's a good combat system. It just doesn't really innovate in any way. The problem I have with it, I suppose, is the camera more so than anything else. The, the camera, especially in tighter areas, does have a tendency of getting in the way, which definitely doesn't help. You often have to angle it with the mouse. I think it's probably a lot easier on PC because you can twist the camera around a lot quicker than you would be able to do on a console, so that's good. But it's still annoying. It gets in the way from time to time. There are also basic platforming elements. I say basic because they're definitely not difficult in any way, shape, or form. Most of the time, it's just a case of, oh, do I have to wall jump here? Yes or no. And if the answer is yes, then it should be fairly easy to figure it out because usually the areas you have to wall jump in have these handy green lights that say, hey, wall jump here, dumbass. 
That kind of thing. And occasionally the character of Deadpool will tell you that as well. It's like, hey, just go do this. Just flat out say that. It's done less and less of that as it's gone through the game, but it is the fourth wall breaking self-referential stuff that, you know, it's kind of to be expected, really. So, aside from that, it will be platforming, combat, and the occasional cutscene. In fact, there are quite a lot of cutscenes. They never really outstay their welcome, but I have a feeling that the overall tone of the game might actually get in the way of people enjoying it. The reason I say that is because it has a tendency to really, really say, Hey, look at me, I'm a Deadpool game. Over and over and over again. It can get to be a little bit much. For the most part, I've got to give High Moon credit, they have actually paced it in such a way that it doesn't become too much. And the fact that there are these random moments but they don't overdo it is a very good thing indeed. They could have. Very, very easily. Ooh, that's fun. They very, very easily could have completely gone overboard with the lolso random stuff. The stuff like the... <laughs> which actually was funny, I've got to admit. The stuff like the taco version of Cable. Cable's talking and Deadpool imagines him as a taco and as this strange kind of... What's the best way to describe it? I think kind of annoying orange style to it where they've superimposed a real mouth and eyes over a taco. And it's actually quite funny. And the little character bios that come up are both pretty accurate to the universe and also accurate to the way that Deadpool would see those characters as well. And the nice little cameos from different characters are great and even Deadpool likes to mock a lot of them as well, which I think is pretty damn cool. He comes up against some kind of third-rate, more like C-list enemies, and he comments on that. It's like, hey, could you not get me some better villains to fight and things like that? And the whole meta aspect of it is that this is his game. He made this game. He is starring in this game, and he's got to follow the script. And you even have the High Moon developer call him up during the first few cutscenes, which is pretty cool. After the first level, the game runs out of budget and goes 8-bit for a while. There's tons of stuff like that. Which gets me back to this whole, is it a commentary kind of thing. And it's really hard to tell with a Deadpool game because where does the self-referential meta nonsense end and where does the actual commentary begin, assuming the commentary even exists? I may be trying to be too smart for, for my own good. I could be being super pretentious here when I claim that the game actually is trying to say a lot more than people might initially realize. Where is the line drawn? I think Deadpool is a perfect vehicle for it. There is no better character for that stuff because he is constantly mocking the tropes and he is in itself, he is in himself a trope, which is pretty damn interesting to watch. He's not a likable character. He's very much an anti-hero. He is, he's really just in it for his own interests and he's not a likable guy either. He's actually pretty damn despicable in many ways. And that's in my opinion, appropriate for what they're trying to say, assuming they're actually trying to say anything. And that's the difference, isn't it? That's where you've got to kind of draw the line. If it is a commentary on kind of generic third-person action games, the bloodiness of them, as well as the... Let's just say the not-so-great way that the industry has kind of treated women as characters. Eh? I'm not, I don't want to get into the sexism debate too much because I, I never view myself as smart enough to actually do it, yeah? I have the inherent disadvantage of being male, so my opinion apparently doesn't count. And then I just, I just don't think I'm smart enough to really discuss the wider issues at play there. But it could be. It could very well be a, a way of them commenting on how ridiculous that is. And... You don't feel like Deadpool is a badass for acting that way. At least I don't. Maybe some people would, in which case it's kind of the missed opportunity there. The same way that Spec Ops was, right? Where people didn't get it because they were like, oh yeah, you know, I play the, the same kind of jingoistic titles all the time, and I think this is entirely normal. Huh? I, I think this game is badass because it's what I would expect from a game like this. Whereas in reality, the game was trying to say, no, all of this stuff, it's not badass. It's actually really grim. And you shouldn't really be enjoying it in this way. I think Deadpool's got the same problem. In that he is a character that a lot of people like. And as a direct result, when he does stuff like that, it could be viewed as positive. But hey. The bigger point, I suppose, is whether or not you can do the Spec Ops style thing and still have a good game. Because Spec Ops, to me, was not a good game. It was a good experience. It wasn't a fun game. It was an experience. There are a lot of parts in that game that are not fun. The, the shooting, for one thing, is just 
flat out mediocre in pretty much every possible respect. And there are aspects of that game that just kind of suck. And from a gameplay standpoint, that is. And that's actually fine for the most part because that was what they were aiming to do. Or is it fine? <laughs> There's the debate, isn't it? And that's what a lot of people have said about Spec Ops. Like, this, it's not okay to deliberately make a mediocre game just to try and prove a point. Yeah? Customers are not people you are trying to lecture or preach to. They're certainly not people that you would give a pamphlet to on the street. You're trying to make a game that they'll actually like and enjoy. And if you compromise that aspect to try and ham-fist a message, then you've not done it right. Now, Deadpool, of course, has the potential of falling into that exact same trap. But I think that for the most part, it manages to dodge it. And I think maybe it's because you just can't necessarily look at it in the same way. I think people are going to have different interpretations of it. And the fact is, the gameplay is actually solid. Exceptional? No. No, not at all. It definitely is not exceptional. Is it enjoyable to play? Yes. Will some people find it repetitive? Probably. You know, a lot of people have the same kind of problem when it comes to these action spectacle fighters that the gameplay is too samey for them. Uh, they're really not into it as a direct result. I don't blame them. That's an entirely valid opinion to hold. A lot of these games are very much like that. I personally find those kind of games really interesting. I like them a lot, but not everybody does. And their opinion is most assuredly valid in that respect. All right, time to get out of here. Hopefully there's a way through here. There we go. I personally find it fun, though, and I have laughed more times than I've grimaced. I think that Deadpool's humor is always going to be a little bit cringy anyway, regardless of how you deliver it. But I think that it does a really good job of balancing the self-referential fourth wall stuff with the lol random stuff with the just outright funny. And yeah, I can deal with some of the toilet humor from time to time. And I guess I treat the chauvinistic stuff as a commentary rather than it generally being designed to appeal to teenagers. It is an M-rated game. It shouldn't be sold to teenagers anyway. But there you go. PC port wise, it is what you would expect. Nothing more, nothing less. Graphically, it's not that impressive. Like, it really isn't. It's middle of the road at best. Texture quality tends to suck for the most part. And there are plenty of examples of props that just end up looking dreadful. They really, really do. It's like, oh, look at how much of a console game this is. The options menu is weak. It doesn't give anywhere near enough customization. And locking to 60 FPS is a personal bugbear of mine, but not something that's really going to affect all that many people. Is it functional, though? Yes. Aside from those weird control issues that I had in that area, that's the first time that's ever happened. It's perfectly playable with keyboard and mouse, which is good because not all games like this are. They seem to have done a pretty good job there. Rebindable keys is always nice. So, yeah, it's middle of the road in terms of PC port. Totally playable. And then, of course, there's the price point to bear in mind and the actual overall last ability. The last ability is definitely something that concerns me because it doesn't have anything aside from the challenges. It doesn't. Once the jokes have gone through once, there's probably not a reason to replay this game. Let's be entirely frank here. The game does not do all that well in terms of having different humor. It's all scripted. It's all going to come at particular times. And it can get a bit repetitive as well, frankly. It really can. You can get all these different character barks, whether you're in the middle of combat and you've heard them before. So at that point, it's like, oh, really? Great. He's going to say that again. That kind of sucks. There is an awful lot of voice acting in the game. Don't get me wrong, which is always positive. <laughs> oh, there we go again. But I've got to say that it does get a little bit repetitive from time to time. So... At that point, you're going to say, right, well, there's no real reason to replay it aside from the challenges. The combat system is not good enough, I think, to justify just playing the levels without the cutscenes, without the ridiculous nonsense. Oh, a turret segment. Great. Yeah, this is the second turret segment. The objective, of course, is to be awesome, as you can see. Not really sure why this is here. Again, it's just designed to fill out the game. It kind of sucks. I'd rather just be fighting them, because, like, which is more interesting? This crappy turret segment or the combat system that I've been investing upgrade points in for the last few hours? The answer is the damn combat system. Stop this. God, I, I hate turret segments. Thankfully, they don't tend to outstay the welcome in this game. They usually last about a minute or less, so that's always good. We might be doing a little bit more of that. Uh, yep, yeah, we're going to do a few more. Okay. What I will say is the game is $40, at least in the US at any rate. That's actually lower price than what you would expect for AAAs. And I think that's there because there is no multiplayer, and they knew we can't sell this for $60. It's got... It's got challenge mode, it's got no multiplayer, and people aren't really going to play this through more than once, I would imagine. Really? 
<laughs> oh, there we go. This will get him using, no doubt. Very nice. However, in Europe, it's $50. The uh, 50 euros, in fact. Sorry, I got into a vowel frame of mind there. Dollar equals euro, lol, lol, lol. In this case, actually, it costs more, which is stupid. 40 bucks for this game. That's really up to you. You'll probably play it through once, maybe play the challenges a little bit, and then that, as they say, will be that. So, last ability-wise, no. No, uh, there's not really an awful lot there at all. <laughs> but the ride is definitely enjoyable. This is the kind of game that I would always say, you know, you might want to wait for a sale, but once you get to a sale, you will want to play it. I, that's the same thing I would have said about the first Transformers game, considering it's bad PC port. The second Transformers game, which had solid multiplayer and a really good port, I would have said, yeah, you know what, you should kind of get this anyway. But it's definitely one of those games where you should be saying to yourself, oh, once this gets discounted, hell yes, I should try it out. But it really comes down to your tolerance of the humor. If you hate the character of Deadpool and you find all of the things he says to be just disgusting, degrading, toilet humor and all that kind of nonsense, you know, you're going to hate it. You're absolutely going to hate it because there was no removing Deadpool from this game. This is a good plan. Flawless execution. Perfect timing. Now, I said in the past that there are certain games that very much rely on their license. A recent Marvel game that I covered, which was Marvel Heroes, was exactly that. A game that relied on its license and otherwise is very much a subpar title. Oh, Peter's okay with the budget. Absolutely. There's no real question that that's the case. As far as I'm concerned, I think this game... Could it stand on its own as an action game? Yes. Would it be worse if it didn't have Deadpool put in it? Absolutely! Because half of the stuff that happens in the game happens because of how ridiculously referential a bloody thing is. And that's good, for the most part. But... But... <laughs> it becomes reliant on the license. You can't escape that fact. Is it a good example of a licensed title, though? Yes. The reason it's a good example is because, while it relies on the license, it also takes it seriously. The license carries the game, but it carries it well. And I think it's only really because it happens to be Deadpool that you can actually get away with that. They were fortunate to have this character. If they wanted to do the whole self-referential, aren't video games so stupid, look at how dumb they are kind of nonsense, then only Deadpool would have worked in that scenario. Turns out they happen to have Deadpool. So, if I'm totally honest, I'm actually having a ton of fun with this game. It's a really above, <laughs> it's a really above average, what a silly thing to say. It's an above average action spectacle fighter that is carried through by the strength of its main character, even if the main character is an absolute scumbag, which he is, unquestionably. No doubt about that. Is it a commentary? Or is it just the kind of par the course, slightly above average action game? Is the chauvinism a poke at the silly treatment of women in video games over the past X number of years? Or is it just because, hey, Deadpool is an asshole? Hard to say. Very hard to say. I, if I was an optimistic fellow, I would like to say that yes, actually, it really is a clever comedy, it is a clever commentary, it's a bit of a parody of itself, and... Oh, it's, the controls are backwards. I hate you so much, game. If that were the case, I'd say, yeah, you know, I would love to believe that that was the case. I don't know if it is. I don't. I have theories that it might be. I think that High Moon could probably pull something like that off, considering their usual respect for the licenses and the really good job that they actually did with the Transformers games. God, I can't even make my way over here. It's a pain in the ass. But uh, it's hard to say. It comes down to your own individual interpretation. I don't think you're really going to necessarily agree with me. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But as it stands, it's an amusing romp. A very amusing romp, and a good way to portray the Deadpool character, as far as I'm concerned. They've done a- it's, it's a licensed game that doesn't suck. That's rare enough in and of itself, right? There you go, folks. Deadpool, currently available on Steam for $40, 50 euros or your regional equivalent, which is not exactly great, is it? Not- not really. Might be something you might want to wait for on sale. If you're in the US, uh, I think $40 is a good price for it, personally. I would have paid that, but then again, my opinion doesn't really matter in that regard, does it? All right, folks. Deadpool.
My name's been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. What the fuck? <laughs>